he put his head down like this as if he was scared for me. And this is and his manager says, This is Tommy, he does you can do pleased to meet you. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? Hey guys, was Donnie Yen scared of GQ Do expert Tommy Carruthers? Well, possibly. Tommy shares an interesting story when he met Donnie Yen. Also in this video, Tommy Carruthers and I discuss boxing, Mike Tyson, and then Jeet Kune Do training. So make sure to check out his YouTube channel and his website, by the way. I'll link them in the description below. Also, please help support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing, sharing, and uh, let's get on to the discussion. Oh, make sure to stay until the end, by the way, because Tommy gives his opinion on Sistema and he shares a very interesting experience he had in Russia with the next Spetsnaz guy. Donnie Yen is pretty dang quick and good and you know like i mentioned before van Dan's my favorite he's well donnie <laughs> yen donnie yen did not want me to be in a movie with him really and his manager said no no i says donnie's scared in case that you hurt him or make him look bad i goes do you honestly think and and you know my partner who came in and out yvonne she can tell the story um that we went to hong kong hong kong <laughs> we sat in a premier with with his manager and Samuel Hong was there, Donnie Yen. We'd never heard of Donnie Yen. And we would try to pitch for, you know, um, our own one of his movies um, later on. And, oh, no, you'll make him look bad. You could hurt him, uh, blah, blah, blah. And when I met him, when we came out of the premiere, he put his head down like this as if he was scared for me. And, this is, and his manager says, this is Tommy. He does you can do Pleased to meet you. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this guy, you know? And I says, well... What's going to happen? And he says, well, scared in case you hurt him. I says, why would I jeopardise a chance to get my foot into the motion film industry and hurt somebody or be disrespectful to somebody? Yeah, exactly. I says, why? I says, that isn't a valid excuse. I says, because nobody would do that. Nobody would get a chance. Okay, we're going to put you in this movie. You know, you're going to be with Donnie and you're going to fight him. And then you go uh, in between the fights and come and knock him out and go, ha ha, I beat you. Who would do that? That's just yeah, that's ridiculous. Thing to do, you know, um, so it never went anywhere. Never went anywhere. What? That's really bizarre. I mean, because Donnie Yen, obviously, I mean, I don't, I don't think he's ever fought professionally, so he's obviously just a movie guy. And you know, they're going to choreograph the fight to obviously make him look better than anybody else. Well, well, we really didn't know who he was to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And later on, you know, it was we saw. Well, we were actually sitting in the movie theater. He was sitting behind us. And then I'd say to his manager, he goes, okay, so what about, you know, why don't you give me a, a partner film with him? Uh, oh, I don't know, and, you know, all this. So I just went, okay, film you know, but. Well, aside from that, did you try to pursue, like, a film career, even, e either in Hong Kong, uh, aside from Downey Yen or outside of I Hong Kong? I had a few chances with different things, never came to fruition, and in all honesty, I really just gave up with it, to tell you the truth, you know. It's something I'd, I've, I've always wanted to do because I think I've really done everything I set out to do in martial arts. And actually doing that would be, it really would be amazing. But I've, all, I've been close a few times to, to getting parts and things that were half decent, but nothing came out. And I just get too wrapped up my own training and teaching that I just went, you know what, I can just leave it. Maybe it's not for me, you know. Maybe I should have really pushed it harder, you know, but I just left it. You know, which mm. I don't know. Did you ever think about competing, like in competitions or anything? No, I know really. Um, at one time, I really, I was really interested in becoming a professional boxer. You know, because when I trained with a guy, I was just telling you a minute ago. You know, but um, he says, "No, Tommy says I think you could do this. Um, I think you could have a few amateurs and be a really good pro." But I thought about it and I thought it sounds like a good idea. But I wanted to really pursue, you know, Jeet Kune Do. That's the thing that really. I wanted to, you know, put all my time and effort on it. But doing that line, I, I thought to myself, you know, I wish to hell I'd have done it because I think I could have done it. Mm -hmm. I really did, you know. But it wasn't for me, and that's it. And um, what we really wanted to do, or what we might have a chance is, of uh, working with a really, I don't know why I mentioned his name, working with a really high-level boxer that we think could, it could be taught a lot of Bruce's concepts that he could take this into the ring and further you know, his boxing career. Because Bruce was heavily into boxing. But I mean, the old school boxing, you know, the modern kind of this kind of stuff. 
And it'd be really interesting to work with this guy or any other, you know, high-end professional boxer and just see if we can take him to a higher level and change the whole outlook of boxing. Because I think boxing, as much as it's pretty good, it's got to the stage where it's quite bland. And I think it's not entertaining enough. And really have people in the ring who are incredibly skilled and entertaining would bring a lot of the people back for MMA. Because when I watch MMA, it really doesn't impress me. Bum, 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 on the deck, bum, bum. And it's like, after five minutes, I turn it off. But I can watch a really, really good boxing match. But the fun is, the thing is, with, with a good boxing match, you have to go back the way to see some good boxing matches because there's nothing really there now that really impressed me. You know, when I look back, you know, at some of the older boxers, they, they seem to have a a different perspective on fighting and a different perspective on boxing. And I don't know, it just, they just seem, the skill level just seems to be a wee bit higher, you know? So this is a thing that would, would, would hope we're going to, this is going to materialise in the future, you know? Um, it's just another avenue that we can take Bruce's idea and push it into this other avenue, you know, so is it Bruce's concept is still, still alive? Because I, I really don't think we can, JKD's or other place, but when you look at the majority of people, you know, it's teaching it, it, it really just looks, I can see why MMA people and karate people and other and Thai boxers look at JK and go, this is rubbish. I could see that because, mm. you know, 95% of it just is rubbish. It, it doesn't seem about fighting and it seems to be about the JKD guys went back the way and something that Bruce didn't want and they became a new classical mess rather than this highly evolved fighting systems, as Bruce would say, stripped to the bare essentials. That is just like, you know, just like, and that's it, finished. And to date, you never see MD that can accomplish that, that could just stand here and even even for three or four feet away and go, boom, and that's it, and finish somebody with a punch or kick, you know? Um, I always tell people the highest end of JKD, or I'm not JKD, the highest end of hand-to-hand -hand combat, really is offence and defence look the same. You know, you couldn't put a line down and go and he attacked them, you know, he was defending. It should just look the same. And there's hardly any tools on it. You know, your longest weapon here or here, and you know, your kick, that's it. And it's just a case of just like somebody snapping my fingers, and that's it, finished. And when we talk about speed, I don't like to say, you know, what, the speed I'm thinking about, or I'll call it speed, but really the word I like to use is the suddenness. Okay. And suddenness is a thing that's, that in my mind, it's above somebody being fast. And you see Bruce like this. Bruce is sudden. And what I mean by that is the typical example is the, the fight scene between Bruce and Bob Wall where he just stands like that and for nothing they telegraph he hits him they drops him that's suddenness yeah. I always think when people are fast to hit the guy the guy falls back but suddenness is just boom and he goes what? so imagine being able to do this for about four or five feet away have such speed or have such suddenness that you could just execute this blow and it'd be finished and you never see him you didn't know the JKD's these old packs all that so and all these other ornamentations that look like some kind of you know, Chinese dance or go like this and blah, 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 and you take them down and they roll about the deck. And there's maybe seems to talk about how can we conclude this within a millisecond? I think the strategy behind JKD, I, th um, I think, would be amazing in boxing, you know, and just changing how people stand, really honing their, their, their mechanics. And I think that to be not just devastating fighters, but I think to be highly entertaining, and that's the thing, you know. That's how a lot of people go to uh, MMA to watch it because it's quite entertaining, mm. and boxers no get the same form it used to be. Um, and I think if the the standard of boxing is higher, and the boxers were more entertaining and a lot more skillful, people would come back to boxing. They certainly would, you know. But the boxing world seems to have been doing a wee bit. You know, it's when I look at feeding pads and I look at training, I go. Is this the best that they can do at this level, professional level? Because this is pretty poor. You know, it just it looks pretty poor. The mechanics with punching, evasion, movement just seems to be, it's not there. And I think a lot of the people who are world champions, they're only there because, you know, they're just natural fighters and they're powerful punchers. I think that's it. But when you look at them, can they really box? It's, it's, they're fighting, but no boxing if you understand me. And when you look at her mechanics, I go, oh, my God, man, that's just arm punching her, using her waist. There's no hip, there's no leg, there's no nothing. And you look at it. But when you look at Jack Dempsey's book and you read Jack Dempsey's book, I mean, he's more or less saying the same thing. And when you look at um, Jim Driscoll's book, he wrote these books way back 
19, say, 20 odd, really because he was disgusted way back then with the standard of boxing, you know. Um, but this boxer, when you look at the mechanics, is terrible. When you do know? you think boxing peaked, in your opinion, 80s or the 90s or even before that? Um, maybe between 70s and 80s, you know. Oh, maybe. Really? maybe. But I think it's kind of went like that, you know. Um, but the it just seems to be quite kind of bland when you watch them, you know, it's especially heavy, but it's just two big guys pounding each other. You know, you really don't see a hell of a lot of skill there. What are you doing? Um, but it'd be good to get somebody in the heavyweight division and uh, really work with them and develop, you know, them into something special with superior mechanics, really amazing tactics, again, and highly entertaining that people go, wow, my God, you seen this guy, you know? He's got everything in the package. They can close in fast, they can make you come in, they can pick you off, they can go to safety, they can put you wherever he wants to put you, they can punch you, they can nearly tell the crowd, the next round he's getting knocked out, boom, and he's done. You know, people would go, well, we've seen this guy, you know what I mean? I think the last, the last time we saw a person like that was Ali, when he could say, right, and round four, he's away. No, oh, then, so you don't think Mike Tyson had that? No, I, I do like Mike Tyson, I really do. Um Tyson is just more or less modelled than Jack Dempsey, you know, that, that was it. Uh, it. It's just a pity that Tyson just went off the rail, you know. He, it's just a pity he went off the rail, you know, with all the things he'd done in his life that sidetracked him and, you know, his boxing career just took a dive and he didn't end in a good a, a good uh, standard, you know. But I think, you know, in his heyday, I, he was, he was for a short guy, he was amazing. There's no two ways about it. And he was taught well. Well, Custom Art done a really good job on him. You know, definitely. Um, but he's in a different league, league for Muhammad Ali. You know, Tyson, his movement isn't the same. It's not as fluid as Ali. Ali was up on his toes, picking people off, moving back, punching, moving right, moving left. You know, he was a hard guy to hit, you know, and then just bum, 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 you know, and he was very, very entertaining. I'm not going to say Mike Tyson, no entertaining. He was, you know, but knowing the same level, you know, mm. knowing the same level. What do you think about Mike Tyson fighting now? Because it sounds like he's going to have another fight. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think uh, Tyson, I think he can come back in and ring and he can train and he could probably come back in and do it. You know, I mean, when you look at the cropper heavyweight boxers, they're, they're okay. But, you know, when, when Tyson when he was, was in his heyday, he was at a higher level than these guys. So when he comes back and he trains, I, I think he's still been a higher level, you know. But, but, but in saying that, when I watch one of his coaches, Coach and I went like, my God, this guy, the, the guy was ever, everywhere with the pads and Tyson was coming in so fast that the guy couldn't even feed the pads from, you know. So I, I just don't know what happened with the trainer on that side. And when I look at him, I go, well, I could do a better job than this guy because it looked more or less like Tyson was dictating, you know, um, what he was doing rather than the coach dictating what he should be doing. It just looked as if it was all off, you know. Um and you look at me, go up, okay, just take it back and take it back, back a few steps, and let's start and build it up again, and just hone everything, get the mechanics, get everything right. Let's slowly increase it, you know. Um, but again, I he's, I think he could come back and do it. Definitely. So real quick though, so Tyson will most likely fight another older guy, you know, like Evander Holyfield or yeah. somebody uh, like that. Do you think Tyson, and he's about what fifty three, maybe? Right. Do you think? he can legitimately with the proper training beat say someone like Tyson Fury for like, it would be, very, it'd be very, very interesting to actually try and do that way. to tell you the truth. I mean, if they turn around and say to me, okay, Tommy, try it and see what you can do. You know, I, I'd love to see if I could take him. Imagine you take a 50 year old guy and you put him in the ring with a, a younger guy like that. And Tyson's Tyson, you know, Mike Tyson smashes Tyson Fury. I mean, that'd be like, wow, my God, you know, that'd be amazing. I mean, because it doesn't matter what way you look at it, you know, Mike Tyson is still a dangerous person. He's, so you think he more, could do it, though? I think he could because moves, he's, great. I mean, he's got that killer instinct. He's probably yeah. not training at full capacity. I could maybe take six months to get, him, to get him up to full capacity. But the thing is, you know, Tyson Fury's a good boxer, you know, but I just think that Mike Tyson's got that killer instinct. When you look at him and you look at his eyes, he's got the eyes like a shark. You know, when you look at a shark's eyes, yeah. it's just, there's nothing there. When you look at Tyson, he goes in the ring, he's just like a shark. You know, he's got that killer that 
these other guys just don't seem to have. And I think the reason they get sidetracked with because of things that happen in his personal life, he just loses that killer instinct, you know. But think if he was didn't get sidetracked, just think how he could have finished, you know, his, his boxing career, you know. I think he just wasn't training as much. He had too much problems up here thinking about it. And um, he didn't have a clear mind. But I think if he had that clear mind and didn't have all the problems, but he's still dangerous. You know, I used to say that about Jesse Glover. Jesse Glover at six, dude, people thought, okay, you know, he's, he's, he's an old guy with a beanie hat on and all the rest. I think, no, no, don't, don't, don't look at him like that. This guy is dangerous. You know, this guy is dangerous. And he always reminded me, as I was telling you earlier on about the judo guys that I trained with, there's two of them in particular. And one was a seventh dan, one was an eighth dan. And used to come in with their, their flat caps on, their jackets, you know, and, and their glasses. When they took that off, they put their geese on and you watched them throwing people, he went, my God, they're dangerous. And they were in their late, I'm sure they were in their late 60s. And you could imagine maybe one of these guys in the street and having some trouble with some young punk and him just going, boom, boom, and throwing them. And they're the biggest surprise, you know. That's how you should always, you know, you should always respect the older people because you just don't know what's behind that, you know, what they've got. Um, and I think Tyson's the same, dangerous. Jesse was the same, you know, even late in his life at 70, he was dangerous. And he was incredibly fast, that's the thing. Jesse Glover was incredibly fast. His closing speed for an older guy was like, <clears throat> with an eye jab and I've been on the receiving end. It's like, my God, you know. So, but that'd be really, that'd be something to see. Yeah, it would. I mean, I don't know how you describe it. I wanted to ask you, because I know Brandon Lee, when he talks about it, he says, you know, my Jeet Kune Do is not my father's. Uh, yeah. Just like I'm sure your Jeet Kune Do, even though highly influenced by Bruce Lee, is not. Is it Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do? Because you do say you teach original Jeet Kune Do. Well, um, I'd be teaching all Bruce's uh, uh, original techniques. You know, the only thing that would be, uh, I would really be looking at develop my own training methods to enhance the techniques. That's what I have. It's the same side kick, the same lead punch, you know, it's all the same techniques, but the training methods are always evolving all the time. That's the key. But as, you, as you're as you going more towards simplicity, it becomes incredibly difficult to, sometimes to even teach people because even simple things, normal people that just would start a martial arts class would find it very difficult. And sometimes I feel when I go to conduct a seminar, I've got to I've got to back down a few levels to try and find something that people can do. That's the most frustrating thing, you know, because JKD is always evolving. It's always you're always looking for efficient ways. You're always looking for simpler ways to do things, you know. So people think just because you're maybe throwing an eye jab or a punch or a side kick that well that's easy, but it's not really that easy when you make it simple. And you throw away a lot of things that you don't need. It becomes incredibly difficult to do simple things. You know what it you know what it sounds a lot like? Because it almost sounds like more concepts than than a system so much in a yeah, way, which, which it really reminds me a lot about Sistema. Have right. you ever looked into a research Sistema at all? Um, well, <laughs> this is a really funny story. I went to Moscow. And I thought I was actually going to do a seminar, but when I got there, I was actually going to teach, you know, one guy in particular. So I turned up at this playground with a few guys that had actually brought me there. And I says, well, I'm having the seminar outside. He says, no, I said, we're waiting for somebody coming. I said, I thought this was a seminar. So it cut a long story short. The biggest guy I've ever saw in my life turned up, this Russian guy. And uh, hey, this guy, the guy was holding a kick shield. So he was side kicking this other guy, and the guy wasn't moving, but, you know, um, the person who was kicking, he should have been kicking him miles away. So I said, you need to learn how, you need to move your body, learn how to move, move your body weight. So I got him to move his body weight. I showed him how to kick, and the guy went flying. So I showed him how to move his body weight. So he started to get it, but again, I, I come back and says, why do you want to learn JKD when you've got Russian martial arts? And went, ah, rubbish. It is rubbish. And I was surprised because the funny thing is, he was ex Spesnas, and all his friends were either acting Spesnas, still involved in it, or some other 
um, Russian military people or uh, security services, and they scoffed at uh, Sistema. And I was huh. very, very shocked. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe, you know, see, it, it's interesting with Sistema. It's like, it's one of those things from people I've talked to where it takes so long to develop. Almost, you know how it takes like you 10 years to get like a black belt in jiu-jitsu to get oh. really proficient? It's right. almost something yeah. like that. So it's interesting that he's an ex-business guy. So I'm almost wondering if he just didn't get it and he sucked at it or if, if more people think it's rubbish, don't want to talk bad about it if they're Russian because they're kind of a pride. Having I'm, been really, I'm not really sure, but they, did, they really didn't have any confidence in it, to tell you the truth. Um, and they practiced a bunch of martial arts in the past. So that, um, and they asked me about punching. So I held my hand up with that. I said, punch it. And they're punching it. And they would fists like this. And there was nothing, you know. So I says, okay, punch it. Told them, showed them how to use their legs. Showed them how to use their hip. I, sh I said, wait, I wanted to snap it so you can hear that echo when you threw it. So we're punching it. It was getting no bad. And then you could hear that crack. And I'm thinking, that's it. And he said, wow. He says, that's very, very interesting. He says, nobody, nobody's ever taught me that before. You know, but the thing is, I get, this isn't mine, I get that for the late Howard Williams who talked about Bruce in a double shock with a punch should get fast, but it should retract quicker. So I had them throwing the punch. And once it starts to use their body weight and pull it back faster, you know, you could hear the crack of it. So five minutes previous to that, my hand was okay. Five minutes later, I was like, okay, that's enough. Huh. You know, the punching power really started to increase. Um, I said, show me some more of this stuff. So I was just showing them some small bits and pieces, you know. But it was very, very interesting that um, these guys who were really all you're acting in Russian military form just really dismissed uh, Sistema and, and was like, so, so yeah that's interesting that is certainly an interesting story <laughs> and experience with that so long story short you don't uh, think too highly of Sistema then is I saw so Summit and I think Summit is okay because there's some bits that, that's very very similar to JKD there's some bits I just think is just no I just I wouldn't have, I, I, in all honesty I was taught uh, British uh, military and armed combat with my father that's he was taught during World War II and he taught me that at a really, really early age. And I would say some of the Sykes Fairbairn stuff is far better than Sistema. It's, it's a lot more believable, you know. And the stuff that he taught me was really, really simple stuff. And uh, I've used it on countless occasions because it was programmed into, my, programmed into my system before I'd done JKD. This stuff is programmed in it, you know. And I would just be catching people with finger locks and chin jabs and throwing them and just certain things like that, you know. Um, and it, was, it seems to be a shorter, compact way of fighting. And I think that some some military people still use that today, you know. Um, but, but it's just okay. 